Hello, this is Vampire. Okay, so uh, recently I uploaded the uh, Force to Force block video. This is kind of the uh, the part two. You could see we're doing um, knife defense. And uh, the reason why I mentioned the Force to Force block video is because uh, both drills, I mean, what you're seeing here is partner drill, right? Uh, both drills are related, very, very closely related. And um, we do the force to force block with the sticks first. And uh, it's usually single stick versus single stick. And, and we start from there and then we progress to what you're seeing here, which is a knife and a improvised shield, essentially, which is just a, it's a bag is what he's using. Um, it's kind of like an Indiana Jones pouch, and, and he's just using that to uh, defend against the uh, knife attacks. And yeah, to me, this is a very, very uh, valuable training, uh, training drill that, that we're doing. I'm you know, putting in some attacks here that are based off of the basic angles of attack, but... Um, there are some small fakes, uh, a little bit, and and uh, a little bit of um, he doesn't know what's coming. You know, it's it's not choreographed. Um, he has a general idea, but you know, I I could just kind of like what you just saw there is trying to corner him, trying to stab him repeatedly in the in the midsection. Um, I could fake high, go low, like you just saw right now. Um, pretend like I'm going low and then come up high or uh, the, he has he doesn't know and that chaos element is what makes this drill so valuable is real life is going to be chaos you you have no idea and like I said the technique is based off of the force to force block which is a technique that some Filipino martial arts schools may actually teach, um, but a lot of times it's overlooked big time. And for me, in in uh, what I teach my students, I have found it to be one of the most important techniques because it is the it is the ground zero of your techniques. So from there. I teach, I teach the force-to-force -force block, but then the goal is to change it to what I call the diamond defense. And the diamond defense is where you go beyond the force-to-force -force block and you are linking other defensive techniques that, that you learn in, you know, Filipino martial arts, Kali, Iskrima, Arnis. And, um, but if you just learn normal defense and counters and defang the snake... I feel like without having the ground zero, the most basic, without understanding that, then the rest uh, is still like a dice roll, you know? And, and once you understand the solid base level, ground zero, I keep calling it that, but, but the lowest tier, once you understand the, the most basic, like you, could, you saw me right there, I was coming in with like some rapid fakes and stuff right to his face, very intimidating. And when you have someone, you know, pull out a knife and, and try to attack you like this, um, understanding the most basic thing you got to do, which is once again, the, the force to force block, trying to keep the distance using an improvised shield. This is so, so valuable. And because like people... You know, we, we uh, I guess it's natural for human beings to want to look good. And so we're getting into more fancier drills and stuff like that. And, and I, I just see that all across the board. Everyone doing much, much more fancy, cooler looking drills, partner drills. And, you know, once again, to be able to pull that off in a real life situation is going to be very difficult. And especially without understanding the base. And, and to me, it doesn't get more basic, more of a base than, than what you're seeing here, which is the force to force block. To me, that's where it all begins. Um, and it's going to link 
all your techniques together. Now, as what you're seeing here is at some point, right, you could get cornered too much. You're going to run out of space. So even though you're trying to go, what he's doing here, what my student's doing here is he's going in a circular direction, okay? Because if you just move back, you're going to get cornered. And just like that, you're going to run out of space. So at that point, you have to secure the arm. Because if you don't secure the arm, then that arm is free to keep cutting you. And, and um, that's, that's one of the things that, that we did today is, is I, I reminded him that if you don't secure the arm, I will cut you. Like, oh, of course, I'm using training knives here, but I'm, I'm not just going to stab and then stop. I'm going to stab it. And, and if that arm, like you block it, and if you don't secure it, that arm's moving to the next target and the next target. And so you better catch it. <laughs> and and uh, when we get close enough, he does that. He does. He secures it. He what I call a wrap. So uh, we're still following um, the defang the snake principle, in my opinion. And and uh, so when when he wraps my arm like that, I call it the. Uh, it's like if if you were out in your backyard and there was a snake, and you had to defend yourself against the snake. You want to wrap it up. You want to throw like a like a big, thick blanket over it and wrap it up. You know that that's the best. If you just have a shovel, and if it's you versus a snake, you know that that's more like you're trying to kickbox with a snake, and and or you're you're trying to play a striking game with a snake. And and if the snake gets understands that. They might be faster, <laughs> so that that's a big risk. But if you throw a blanket over the snake, you wrap it up, and then use the shovel, you have a much much better chance. So, so that's kind of the idea here. When when you're defanging the snake, we are wrapping up that arm. The only problem with doing this this drill right here, and 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 I explained to to him as well, was that. He was getting a little bit too um, over enthusiastic about wrapping the arm because that seems like the ultimate goal. So your brain goes, that's what we want to do. And it's not. What we ultimately, the best thing what we want to do is keep the distance, get out, survive, and run away. That, that's what we want. We only wrap when there's no other choice. We wrap when you screwed up. So I, your brain needs to understand that because your brain will go, oh, okay, I'm going to go into wrapping and then I can do some lock flow stuff and it's cool. It's not cool. It's dangerous. You, you know, it, it is a scary thing. And, and so we want to avoid that as much as possible. We're only doing it because we need to. So that needs to be understood and reminded over and over again to yourself it what you're doing there when you when you're wrapping is the plan b because plan a already left the boat i mean it, it already left the dock okay so plan a is what we want let's create that distance but when you're unable to then like just like you just saw right now we have to close the distance because if you stay in medium range then you're going to have to be Neo from the Matrix, and nobody is. So even the ones that come close to that, <laughs> even though even there are some amazing athletes out there with incredible reflexes, you know, world-class athletes, and even those people, they, they can't be Neo from the Matrix 100% of the time. So that's why we avoid the medium range. So anyway, um, that's it for now. I hope that helps. Uh, thank you for viewing and take care, folks. <clears throat>